Hi, I'm Debbie Brown with DebbieBrownQuilts.com. Welcome to my little experiment. I've always wanted to start a podcast, but I can't figure out how to talk about quilting with show, without showing pictures of what I'm talking about. I also know that quilters don't watch videos. They listen to videos while quilting and only glance up occasionally, or at least that's what I do. This video podcast is going to be mostly me talking with only a few images on the screen so you can glance up only occasionally and not miss anything. I have no idea if this is going to work, but I decided to give it a try. So welcome to my first video podcast. Episode 1, Stitching with one and a half inch Scraps. I've been quilting for over 30 years and sewing for even longer. I am physically incapable of throwing away any scraps of fabric. I have stashed them into bags and boxes and tins and they've taken over my life. In the last several years, I've made a concerted effort to deal with these scraps and I've been cutting them into usable sizes and trying to uh, really make a bunch of scrap quilts to lessen the overwhelm in my studio. Every time my bags and boxes of scraps start to look empty, I add new scraps to them that are from new projects. So it's, it's hopeless, but I'm still fighting the good fight. The smallest sizes that I cut and keep are one and a half inch squares and one and a half inch strips. I have 10 different projects I've made or am making using these small pieces. I travel a lot to teach quilting and usually take a do nothing day on the first day when I get home. I stay in my PJs, I piece scraps together, I rest, unpack my quilts from the trip and generally just fiddle around. After last week's adventure in New York City and quilt retreat where I was teaching for the fun folks at Bits and Pieces Quilt Shop at the retreat they held in Portsmouth, New Hampshire, I came home got in some clean pajamas and started sewing. I pulled out a Harney tea tin filled with one and a half inch scrappy blue squares. We are huge tea drinkers in my house. I only have three cabinets in my kitchen. Uh, my kitchen is not really great on storage, but one cabinet is entirely taken up with tea and we're fine with it. Harney is our favorite brand of tea and the fun part is it's local to us. It's within an hour of our house and it's a very fun trip to go to the Harney Tea Room. My favorite tea is cinnamon spice. I might have it in black tea, decaf black tea and green tea. Uh, I also have it in loose and tea bags. We're kind of hardcore. Those tea tins that get emptied at my house make great storage containers. Um, they're really cute, they're different sizes, and I can put in pins and clips, but I also sort my scraps into them. So when bored, I went into a big old bag of one and a half inch squares and sorted them by color into different tea tins. I have a Harney tea tin filled with one and a half inch blue squares, and they were, it was filled to the top. So I pulled out my, another Harney tea tin filled with scrappy white, and it's mostly the same white, um, because I keep a bolt of white, all my backgrounds are the same, um, so any little pieces get cut. I have a full tin of white one and a half inch squares. So I sewed those together checkerboard square style into six inch blocks, 36 squares per, per block, and I made 16 blocks. Um, I figured that was 500 and some one and a half inch squares that got out of my house. It doesn't really make much of a dent, but it feels virtuous anyway. I decided to set those 16 squares as a baby quilt um, and I was looking at three inch sashings and it, it, I've made it before just a scrap quilt I throw together um, but I was trying to figure out what to set this with and I know I have a collection of cottons that are a wool print um, and I love them and I was thinking oh if I have one in mint that would be great because I buy fabric by the bolt. So I was looking for a bolt of mint wool print. And when I looked in that dark corner of my sewing room on the dark and rainy day, I found 
a bolt and grabbed it out. And it turned out it was a really gorgeous gray burlap print from Ben Artex. It wasn't the wool. I think the wool would have been great, but I put my hands on the burlap first. Once I saw it with the blue blocks, I knew it was the perfect, perfect choice. Um, those blue and white blocks on the gray um, on the gray burlap print was really crisp and sharp and classic and just a perfect baby quilt or charity quilt, 45 inch squares. It was perfect. Since I was taking a rest day, I decided to quilt this quilt sitting down on my home sewing machine because sitting down on, on my home sewing machine. So I went and pulled out a scrappy batting. Now, I keep my battings, I only use a certain number of battings, um, and I kind of keep them, the leftovers in bags, whenever there's little scraps left over, those strips down the edge when you finish a quilt, and I have a bag full of one type of batting and a bag full of one another type of batting, and keep them segregated that way. And when the bag gets full, um, it's time to sew them together and make a quilt. So I pulled a batting that I'd made that was mostly out of my own, but also a friend of mine, um, gave me a big garbage bag full of her scrap battings. And this was Quilter's Dream Polyester Select Batting. And this is Tara Orchard Hills Quilting. So I sewed her scraps together with mine and it was just, yay, she wanted to get the batting out of her sewing room and I never turned down free batting. So I sat at my sewing machine one day uh, a couple weeks ago and just pieced it together. Uh, when I piece batting, I usually use Deco Bob, which is an 80 weight polyester thread and I use a lingerie stitch to stitch it together. And that way you can't see or feel it through the quilt, it, it makes it invisible. Uh, so I pieced a batting that was big enough for this quilt and then it was time to pick the backing. Now, picking backings in my studio is pretty easy because several years ago, five years ago maybe, I scored a collection of 20 storybook prints, white fabric with black prints on it, and they were all different storybooks. So I've had a little boy carrying a bat, and I've had a teddy bear. The most unusual one was a girl sitting on a bench with a goose next to her, but the goose appeared to be dead. I think it's one of those scary German fairy tales. Uh, I used that on the back of a quilt that I sent into a magazine, and the magazine editor called me and said, what is with the back of this quilt? And I, don't, I said, ah, it was cheap. And I sent her a link to the German goose girl fairy tale. So I haven't had to really choose a backing in a while because my backings are all these black and white prints. I think I only have nine bolts left, so in another couple years, I might actually have to make a decision on what a backing is going to be. But for now, decision made. So I have my black and white batting, backing, and this one is a little boy driving a Jeep. I basted that up on my ironing station. A couple years ago, I got a pressing station from TNT Quilt Boards, and this piece of furniture has changed my life. Um, it is a huge flat table ironing board, but it's also where I based my quilts. So I laid out the batting, and I sprayed it with my 505 spray, and that's the only basting spray that I use um, from Odif. It's fantastic. So I, um, I basted the top onto the batting, and then turned it over and basted the backing onto the batting, and then I was getting ready to quilt, but I had to decide how to quilt it and what thread to use. About 10 years ago, Wonderfill Specialty Thread Company asked me if I would design a line of thread for them, and I said, sure, having no idea what this meant or what this would look like. Um, after a couple tries on the computer, I actually have my own line of thread, and it's called Fabulux. It is a line of 40 weight, three ply, trilobal polyesters. See how that just rolls off my tongue? It's like I say that a lot. And I have 40 colors of it. Uh, coming up with the colors was really fun and I have subsets within that set of 40 colors. So I have pastels, I have brights, I have primaries, I have um, tonal variegateds, but I have one that I just called my choice. And these are threads I've always wanted a collection of threads that color. So one of the colors was called Be Cool. And I was on vacation in Miami several years ago and was in a hotel room that was uh, mint and aqua and gray. And it was really cool and really crisp and wonderful. And I loved those colors. So I designed a thread, um, a, a spool of thread with that in it. It's called Be Cool from Fabulux. 
And when I saw these blue and white blocks on this gray fabric background, I knew that I was going to have to use this Be Cool thread. So I did. But since this is a 40 weight thread, I don't use it in the bobbin. Um, I picked a deco bob to put in the bobbin. It's thinner and I don't have to change my bobbin as often. It makes a great stitch. So that's what I did. I put the 80 weight deco bob in the bobbin. And then I decided I wanted to stitch it with a spiral, a walking foot spiral. I love walking foot spirals. And remember, this was my I'm doing nothing today recovery day from a trip. So I got to do whatever I wanted and that means I used a spiral because one, I thought with a quilt that is squares and squares and squares that a, a big round spiral on it would look good. And two, it's really fun. So I put on my headphones, was listening to Mind Hunter. It's a serial killer FBI show on Netflix um, and started quilting a spiral. If you've never done a walking foot spiral quilted on your quilt, check out my online class uh, on how to quilt a walking foot spiral. It's on my Bull's Eye Cutie Quilt uh, and I give you step-by-step -step video directions on how to do this. So two episodes of Mind Hunter and two bobbins later, my quilt was done and it was time to trim it and bind it. Recently, I've fallen in love with machine binding, so I knew I was gonna bind this quilt right away. I never let them stack up anymore. As soon as I finish a quilt, I trim it and bind it because I know it can be done in about an hour. And then I never have a UFO. Once, I, once a quilt is quilted, it's done. But what was I gonna quilt the, what fabric was I gonna use for the binding? So I thought the quilt would look really crisp with that same gray burlap binding on it, and it would. I also thought it would look kind of sharp if I had a blue fresh fabric binding on it. But I taught a binding class at the Bits and Pieces retreat last weekend and and I knew in my scrap binding bag that I took with me that I had a lot of leftover blue binding scraps. So I simply sewed those together and sewed those on my quilt. Um, whenever I machine stitch, I, I use my regular thread for, that I use for piecing, which is usually a deco bob in the bobbin and then something a little thicker on the top. So I pieced the binding together, sewed it onto the back of the quilt, flipped it around, and then I top stitched it with that Be Cool, that same decorative thread, and the quilt is done. Uh, it's waiting for a, a need. It's waiting for a baby. It's waiting for a charity quilt. Um, but I love having a stack of quilts ready for gifting. Now that this quilt is done though, I do know that I have another tea tin full of little green squares, and I think I can make a matching quilt. So a green, a green and white square blocks in this same gray background with the same thread with a scrappy green binding. I think that would look kind of neat. Um, so do you work in a series like that whenever you finish a quilt? That you're like, oh, that was great, but now I think I'll do something the same, but a little bit different. Every time I finish a quilt, I like to think I'm getting closer to getting my quilts done. But as I'm working on a quilt, I realize every quilt I work on gives me an idea for two new ones, and this is hopeless. But it's hopeless in a really fun way. Thanks for joining me for my first ever video podcast. I'm Debbie Brown from DebbieBrownQuilts.com. Be sure to follow me on all social media as Debbie Brown Quilts. Subscribe to my YouTube channel so you won't miss another video podcast should I decide to record one.